Hey everybody, today's guest won a bronze medal in the Junior Olympics for Rhythmic Gymnastics and is the voice of Ash Ketchum on Pokemon. This is Alice in Wonderland and today's guest is Sarah Natacheni. You're watching Alice in Wonderland, inside the world of animation and games. Hey Sarah! <laughs> Woo! Woo! How are you? Well, welcome to LA. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're a New Yorker. I am. Yeah, born and raised. Really? What part of the city did you grow up in? I grew up in Forest Hills, Queens, and mm -hmm. then I moved to Manhattan when I was 17. It was my dream, my lifelong dream. You got to live in Manhattan. And um, never left. That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're end. kind of the bi coastal, as bi it were. Coastal, yeah, the flying is getting old already. So I don't know how long I can stay by coastal, but um, it is nice to have a home to go home to when I'm in New York. And, yeah. and it seems like I'm going to have to be in New York a little bit more. And, you know, it's yeah, there's work everywhere. And the second you leave from a place, they're like, oh, we want you for this. And I'm like, but I'm going on vacation. And they're like, no, you're not. If you want to work. <laughs> so don't if you want to book anything, just book a vacation immediately book a vacation yeah, you'll, yeah. Get, you'll get the job yeah but i mean there's definitely upsides to being able to know everybody in los angeles and know everybody in new york and yes. work in yes. both markets yeah that's amazing so yeah. what is your perception of los angeles so far do i have to answer this question <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get in trouble um ah uh, it's beautiful mm -hmm. it's a beautiful place mm -hmm. uh, full of mountains <laughs> and um the uh, diversity of the of the plants is really <laughs> diverse and mm -hmm. fun to look at and um the people are great uh they're mostly from new york but those people are <laughs> fabulous they're so nice and um i will say honestly the um the community here like the voiceover mm -hmm. community and the acting community in general they're they're way more way more they're more supportive. They're uh -huh. more like, let's make something. Let's do something. They're they're like ready to go already. There's yeah. no like, yeah, 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 we should write that thing. And then it kind of doesn't happen. Uh huh. There's a lot of that in New York. So far, my impression of LA is that that's not as prevalent. People are like, let's make something happen. Yeah. I think everybody wants to make something happen in <laughs> P.S. Uh, Sarah's that in a lot of traffic on her way here today. So, so in traffic all day. I sit in traffic. It's traffic. Especially. This traffic. That. You get in the car. You have to get out of the car. You load the car. You open the trunk. You park the car. You find the park. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> the whole thing is like it takes twenty minutes longer to do anything. Yeah, but you, you have a booth at your home now. Or? Yes, thank God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But people want you to come in. Yeah, which is great. I love coming mm -hmm. in. I love being in a studio and seeing people and. The whole thing but at the same time it's like the the sacrifice of getting there yeah it's really i also don't live in burbank so yeah to... well and you can always come oh, come hang out at my place if thanks. you're i'll come live with if you. you're in between you just move that right that, in was that hey, an you'll be oh, a, you'll be you'll, you'll be a thruple Excellent. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> so um, rhythmic gymnastics. I'm not exactly sure I know what that is. I think it involves a ribbon and leotards, but tell me more. <laughs> ribbon, ball, hoop, clubs. Ribbon, ribbon, ball, hoops. Ribbon, ribbon, ball, hoop, clubs, rope, and floor. Those are the elements uh -huh. in rhythmic gymnastics. Um, ribbon is the most popular one. People call it ribbon dancing. Don't do that. It's disrespectful. <laughs> um, and I did that for like eight years of uh -huh. my childhood, childhood gone. Wow. And um, yeah, it made me, I think, fit for life because I don't exercise anymore. I refuse. Wow. <laughs> I should probably like, start. I, I did enough. I've, I've done. done enough. I've done enough physical activity. And um, it was great. I mean, after the Junior Olympics, I, I won a bronze medal and I, and I was like, mom, that's it. I'm not doing this How anymore. How old were you then? Uh, 12 or 13. 12 or 13. Yeah. Wow. It's a kid. It's kid stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow. Sick of sacrificing my youth. What was your mom's reaction to that? Were your was your family disappointed at all? Uh yes and no. I mean, they they want the, I've been wanting to quit. I'd been wanting to quit since like day one. Because <laughs> I wasn't naturally very good at it. I wasn't that flexible. So this was all like really, really painful for me. And every day I was just crying at practice and I wasn't that good at it. Mm. But I got really, it was like, it's like an Ash Ketchum thing. Like you, you work hard enough and you get really good at something. <laughs> and I was like, see, I proved that I'm good at this. Can we yeah. move on? Can we get out of here? And did you catch them all? I mean, did you catch I caught them the all. I did. floor and yes. ribbon and yeah, all of it. balls and I caught clubs? all the balls. <laughs> 
Wow. So do you think that speaks to your ability to uh, use those same skills in your voice acting, like be, have endurance over time? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Voice acting isn't nearly as difficult. Mm -hmm. Any th the thing I'm most grateful for in rhythmic gymnastics is that like nothing is as difficult as rhythmic gymnastics and nothing is as difficult as what I went through in high school uh, academically. Uh -huh. Since high school, since gymnastics, I'm like anything I do, none of it's that bad. Yeah. Voice acting is not that hard for me. Yeah. I don't, maybe I'm not the best at it, but <laughs> you keep working. It's a pretty fun there. job fun once job. once you have the job. And the auditions yeah. can be varying degrees of joyful. <laughs> yeah, totally. Depending yeah. upon mindset. Depending on, yeah. Yeah. So, so how did it's it... less the material and more like what you came in there with. Yeah. You know, having a good day, any even the, even the best auditions can be annoying. Yeah. But if you're having a good day... It's all fine. How's your day today? Very traffic. Very traffic. traffic. <laughs> Very traffic. Um, so now um, you were 19 when you took over the role of mm -hmm. Ash Ketchum. How did that all come about? I had representation. They got me the audition. Mm -hmm. And I happened to book it. It was my first, it was my second voiceover job. My first voiceover job was uh, like a medical narration. Uh -huh. So like not acting. <laughs> So were you yeah, in school or acting. were you just pursuing acting full time? I was in, no, I did acting school during high school. Mm -hmm. That was a that was part of it. thing. Yeah. Oh. Uh, not part of it. I went to Lee Strasberg. So I, I did that okay. on my free time. Mm -hmm. And um, I did, I was at UCB. I was studying at UCB doing improv and sketch and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was pounding the pavement, just looking for an agent, doing like Actors Connection and all the mm -hmm. pay to play things and uh -huh. trying to figure, not like Voices.com that didn't even exist back then. I didn't do any like voiceover classes or anything mm -hmm. like that or like voiceover, you know, getting voiceover jobs on my own. I, I still haven't done that. I still don't do that. Yeah. I never did that. I skipped that whole part of the career that a lot of people are taking now. Um but I just I got representation, and got the job. And were you a Pokemon fan? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I came out when I was like 12 years old. So the whole school was like, oh, what is this? You know, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I had one pack of Pokemon cards. My parents wouldn't buy me anymore. <gasps> what about now? How many, how many packs no, of Pokemon I have cards more. <laughs> I have quite a bit more now. <laughs> and so, Thankfully. you know, what was it like? To, did you know, first of all, it, that it was an audition for Pokemon? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And I, I knew what it was and I knew that it was, it was for Ash. And I didn't know anything about why. And there was no Facebook group. There was no like LA, like, this is why they're recasting. Don't audition for this. Yeah. There was none of that. Uh -huh. um, so I just auditioned for it. and. Got it. Wow. So I how did that feel? Terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I am sure I'm ready for this. Of course I'm ready for this. But I, it didn't occur to me that this was uh, as grand a thing as it as it kind of as it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that it was as important to people as it was. When I first got it, I like got death threats because I replaced somebody. I didn't expect that to mm. happen. I thought it would just be like wow. some fanfare. I did like San Diego Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con and they announced us. And I was like, this is cool. And then I was like, you die now. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, OK, thank you. Wow. Maybe. I mean, were they like fun. written Internet? Or? Written Internet things. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Phone calls. Yeah. And you're like creepy. not even 21 yet. No, no. I was 19. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Was your mom out there with you or? No. Oh, that no, must have been really scary. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like yeah. the terrifying was like actually terrified for your life, not just like, yeah, ah, this is scary. Yeah. I was like, oh, I need to like hide myself from the Internet and like not be a part of social media, uh -huh. which was booming at the time. It was uh -huh. like just starting. Instagram was like, uh -huh. and I'm like, oh, everything needs to be private and everything needs to be protected. And I don't want to be known anymore. So Thank what you. has changed then since for now? Um, what has what has changed? A culture of empowerment, mm -hmm. definitely. Like that's so pervasive now. Mm -hmm. Even there was an actress. I don't I don't know her name. Young, young, like nineteen years old, who just came out and did a little video. She, I think she's on a Disney show, and she's like, "Hey, I love my fans. I love all the positivity. Negative, no thanks. You're not hurting me. You can stop now. I'm sorry you're hurting so much that you feel the need to do this. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like. 
had there been someone around like in my in my day who, who I could look up to like that, things could have been different. But, yeah. Yeah. So it, that mostly. And then also I grew up, you know, I got older and I'm like, yeah. all right, I know how to protect myself. And I and I know that hurt people hurt people like this. This isn't this probably isn't a real thing. And it's everybody gets them. I'm not alone. <laughs> like this is a big unspoken thing in our industry that everybody's kind of dealing with. That's yeah. that's pretty hardcore, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. an actual death threat. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so sorry that you had to experience that. That yeah, that's... it still happens. So <sighs> cheers, cheers. Never had a death threat. You know yeah. what they say? You really haven't made it until until people want you dead. <laughs> exactly. So, congrats. Are we keeping this in the podcast? Or? <laughs> yes, we're keeping it in. Something we should keep talking about. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, it is, yeah. And and now you you know you do share on social media, and yeah. I uh, that's how I came to know you was through our mutual friend Erica Schroeder, mm-hmm. and um, started following you. And I actually love what you have to share. It's super funny, and um, you know, I just feel uh, social media is a great way to feel like you know someone even if you don't know them. Yeah, 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 exactly. And there's like a good and a bad side to that, but I, I mm-hmm. see so much good in that. that yeah. Like, I just do it. It's fun. So you know? what made you kind of want to take the first steps? Was it just time? Um, Pokemon Go came out, uh-huh. and I did a video with Business Insider where I like ran around and played Pokemon Go with random people. Uh-huh. And the reaction to that online was so positive, and I was like, I think I have fans. Uh-huh. And that was like the first time I realized like, People actually like are growing up with me at this point and they actually like my work and maybe even me if I come out and I'm like, hey, this is who I am. <laughs> exactly this way. Um, and so I started coming out a little bit more and the, yeah. saying yes to the press and saying yes to like doing silly videos and mm-hmm. hanging out with influencers and mm-hmm. doing this new the new thing that's like the economy now. That's what that's what so much of this is now. So yeah. Why not? Are you enjoying it? I love it. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. It's, it's not it's not what I went to acting school for, but it's like it's this supplemental thing that we never knew existed when we were kids. And yeah. do you do on camera acting as well? I did uh, before <laughs> all of this happened. Yes, I was. And I was pursuing it. And that's all I really wanted to do, actually. Um, but now I'm pursuing it again because I'm done being a shut in. <laughs> yeah. And I love film. Yeah. There's nothing like it. I was a film editor for many years. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about that. I okay. think that's so intriguing. Um, yeah. I, so did you go to college for film editing or no, is it just something I, you did on the side? I dropped out of school. Where did you start? Where did you? Where did I drop out from? Yeah. Hunter College, uh-huh. City University of New York. Good school. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I studied German and French and history and philosophy. And I hated psychology. Sounds like a lot. I thought I would hate. I thought I would like psychology and I really hated it. Um, I did not study film, but I've always been obsessed with film. I, there are films that I've seen over 300 times. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's cause you're shut in. <laughs> one can say, one can say I study film. Um, I love film. It's my favorite thing in the world. Um, so I started editing just for fun. I did a modeling job in Berlin and I just, I took this camera with scratches on it. <laughs> I filmed the girls just being ridiculous. And I uh, I started an iMovie. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, iMovie's not letting me do what I want it to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of a perfectionist. And I like, you know, being persnickety. <laughs> God help me. And um, I migrated to Final Cut 7. And then I was like, ah, oh, this is it. This mm-hmm. is it. And just every little, there are so many little wins when you're editing. Because you're like, oh, that puzzle piece, it fits together so perfectly. I love that. Uh-huh. And so I just kept doing it. And my friends who were filmmakers were like, you're actually quite good at that. Mm-hmm. And they're, they started hiring me. Their friends hired me. Um, friends of friends started hiring me. And I just kind of, you know, through word of mouth, I got an agent at some point. For editing? For editing, yeah. Wow. And she got me the MSNBC job where I was editing a lot of really awful things for like a year and it burned me out. And I was like, maybe I should calm down with the editing. Uh huh. Um, well, the documentary stuff, the documentary yeah. stuff was really hard. I was like doing news. It was, mm. it was, everything was on a really tight deadline and it was about like ISIS. Mm. So there was a lot of that. You're consuming that into your like day to day. 
It's so tough. Yeah. I definitely yeah. can't take much news personally. I don't take much news anymore. Mm-hmm. We don't do news. <laughs> yeah. But 2015, ask me anything. I know all about it. <laughs> so, Horrible time. So then how did you segue from editing? So you're, I guess, still doing Pokemon at that time while mm-hmm. you were editing. Yeah. The days were insane. I was working as an editor for like 10 hours a day. So some uh-huh. of those days I had to also do Pokemon. So uh-huh. I would do like two, I would run up. I was working in Soho in New York and I would have to run up to the studio near Times Square for like two hours and then come back. So that was like my lunch break. Wow. Yeah. And I'd be at the editing suite until like 10 p.m. And did you think at that time, oh, I'm going to be a professional editor or I'll be a yeah. filmmaker or something? Yeah. 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 I wanted to keep editing. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Wow. I loved it. And now I'm like mm, directing. <laughs> it didn't occur to me that like that the next step from editing was directing and that I should be working up to that. That didn't occur to for I was just loving editing so much. I was like, this is great. I could do this for the rest of my life. And now I'm like, I need to be outside. Uh-huh. So yeah. directing definitely. And then I, I directed a little bit and I'm like, this is great. This is really great. And uh-huh. then everything kind of shut down. Right. Yeah. Because I, of the pandemic. Pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, thank God I have voice acting because it's the only thing I can do from home. And I edited a little bit from home, too. I did like a piece for The New Yorker about the Italians singing off the balconies. And oh. yeah, uh, but hope, <laughs> hopeful hope, piece, hopeful piece. Yeah, nothing too terrible. Um, but since then, yeah, editing kind of I've put it away a little bit and focused on moving and focused mm-hmm. on voice acting. Yeah, because that's. Well, it's interesting yeah. because so much of the content creation is editing, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's a piece I know that I struggle with a lot I and that. a lot of other content creators <laughs> yeah. struggle with. So yeah. do you find that, that that's a great way to express yourself since you already have that no, skill? No, you know, you'd be surprised. I hate editing my own stuff. So mm. I do, I do do some influencing mm-hmm. and the worst part of it is like being like, all right, I got to load all this footage Mm -hmm. this iphone like i like beautiful footage i like beautiful things that are you know composition i like to look Uh at beautiful composition on a big screen and be like this is Uh gorgeous Uh i don't like looking at iphone zooms i no no thank you the the, 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 the clothes tight in yeah i can't like come on yeah it's 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 boring so then do you hire somebody to edit some stuff is it just easier yeah and then just at least you can give really good notes I give some notes <laughs> and then I find that annoying because I'm like, I know that I could, I know that I, I oftentimes I'll be like, just send me the, send me the project and I'll just fix it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. It would take me less time to just fix it myself or change it. Then tell no, you. Just, then tell you, <laughs> oh, put this here and put that there. Just give it to me. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. yeah. So I might go back to editing my own stuff because it takes less time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's, it, you know, creating content is super fun. It's just hard to carve out the time, I think, with yeah. with the full time. So you're doing VO full time and now also getting back into pursuing on camera. Yeah. How, what is your average day like? It's not full time. Mm-hmm. My voice acting career is definitely not full time. I only do union work. Mm-hmm. And there's not very much of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. do auditions. I could spend, I don't know, an hour, a couple hours a day, not every day even on that. Mm-hmm. And um, I do conventions now. I'm doing those conventions. Yes. Oh, back we're, anime. We're, we're doing the We're, we're doing, doing I think anime. by the time it, it will have, this will have aired right when we get back. Okay. So, so can if I get you, this? Yeah, I don't think I can get this edited in time. Too bad. If you met be. us at back anime, this is what. Hi, guys. This is us. Here we are. Here we are. (laughs) This is us. This is us. Um, So, so yeah, the conventions Mm -hmm. and... The conventions. I'm working on my own stuff now. Your Um, own movies? or uh, uh, There's an animated project project Mm -hmm. that I'm working on with Vox Media. And my mom is doing all the art. She's a violinist. Mm. She was a Broadway violinist my whole life. And she retired officially, but she still works sometimes. and she just started drawing these random characters. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're a genius. She's always drawn, but this is like on a whole nother level. And so uh-huh. I started showing it to people that are in the industry and they're like, this is great. Wow. Oh, my God. So at the same time, my friend uh, who works at Vox now, it was um, Group 9 before. Mm-hmm. 
he's like, hey, what's up? I'm uh, we're looking for animated series. Do you have anything mm -hmm. that you want to do? And I'm like, I have two things that I want to do. Oh, my God. It's like right place, right time, guys. Right place, right time. Always have <laughs> something ready. Um, and uh, so we started developing it. We're in development now. That's amazing. So, yeah. And then there's a an on camera script uh, that I wrote with a friend uh, that is about a very height, very heightened version of me. <laughs> Most of the things that I've written about are not true; they didn't actually happen. But wouldn't it be fun if they had? <laughs> it's that kind of thing, and uh -huh. it's very cathartic, and it's very it, it, it exists in my mind as like this: what if, uh -huh. what if this really was my awful life? So there's that script, and I want to get that produced this year, hopefully. hopefully. Are you guys going to make it yourself? Uh, hopefully, and in, in, mm -hmm. I don't do anything myself. I can't mm -hmm. do anything myself. I can't do anything myself. I can't drive. I can't cook. I can't I hate cleaning. I, I don't want to be alone. I don't like to do things uh, myself. Uh, no, with a company. There must be a company. Otherwise, I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, go call it. My own money? <laughs> God. <laughs> no. Is your friend in it, too, that you co-wrote it? With? No, he is a writer. Mm -hmm. He does not go in front of camera. <laughs> no, he's no behind camera the camera. Sorry, 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 no, no, oh, so your family's there. from Russia, actually, as yes. you break into the accent. Um, <laughs> did you, were you born in New York? I was born in New York, yeah. What yeah. about your your parents? Everybody's from Russia, ah, the whole okay. family. What I'm part of Russia? Russia. Uh, Moscow, mm, to make it easy, Moscow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moscow, it's fine. Um, but they left in the 70s, thankfully. Mm. And here we Cheers are. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. You also did the audiobook Black Widow a Bad Blood. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Um, so I'm well, sure you put it that way. I'm sure your uh Russian accent helps book that. No, 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 she spoke with an American accent. Really? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, no. She she happens to be Russian and that um being Russian helped, of course, but helped a little she's bit. American. Yeah. yeah. She's like me. How was the audiobook experience? Awesome. Was, have you done a lot of audiobooks? No, and the the reason for that is I don't want to be living in a booth. Mm -hmm. I just don't I don't want to do that. I feel like I can hopefully if they'll have me at that later time in my career, I'll do it later. I'm going to put that off for now. I just <laughs> You'll I wanna, retire and, I'll, and yeah, when they put you yeah. <laughs> do some audiobooks. When it becomes like more difficult to do anything anything Mwah. else yeah <laughs> oh my god that came out so wrong i love i really love it I, I really really do love it and that's what scares me that's why i don't really audition for it much because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to live in a booth yeah i don't like yeah I, i'm it's dark it's, it's it seems it's to be like oh, some people really thrive doing it and then other people are like ah my add I can't yeah, focus. I have ADD. It's too, and it's, it's I actually love audiobooks for that reason. It forces you to focus. Mm. And it's really hard for me not to... It's hard for me to check my phone if I'm reading something and I'm really involved and it's typically kind yeah. of a cold read and I have to be really focused on it. It's yeah. actually a great exercise. Yeah. So I definitely want to do audiobooks in the future. Just yeah. not, not right now. <laughs> right now I want to do other things. And so you you are also in the new Ghost Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Yes, the new Ghostbusters. <laughs> just a little cute little marshmallow, little <laughs> mini little marshmallow, marshmallow person. With yeah. um, Shelby Young as well, mm -hmm. who's coming on the show in a couple weeks. Oh, good. Um, talk about that. How did how did you get involved in that project? Uh, Jason Reitman got in touch because he saw me in the Vanity Fair videos I did. Oh, wow. And he was like, put her in it. <laughs> Oh That's my how God. it happens, I uh, think. That's how a lot of things not happen. Not usually. No, no, usually no, no, no. That's oh. not usually how it happens. Never but mind. But that's an amazing story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He's wonderful. He's oh, such wow. a good, generous guy. And we had a really good time. I did it out of my booth in New York. Uh-huh. Lonely. Can you do the voice for us? <laughs> <laughs> Too hot? No. <laughs> oh, too hot for him. <laughs> too hot to handle. Too hot to Ooh, handle. People are dropping, dropping stuff in the pencil. studio. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. Made him nervous. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the voices. Wow, that's that amazing. I, did. I don't really. And did you do characters. ADR and Luke the whole movie, or just, no, just those? Few just scenes. those characters. Yeah. Oh, it'd be great cute. if there was like a, a bed of. <laughs> through the whole movie though it was a choice that jason just he didn't like the idea they're everywhere they're, they're everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> mini marshmallows <laughs> 
That's so yeah. fun. That's so um, do you do any other characters on Pokemon? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about? Sure. I do 26 of the Pokemon. Like the actual, I can't do any of the voices. Yeah. Legally. Um, legally. Yeah. yeah. And I play his mom. I play uh, jo uh, Joanna, Don's mm -hmm. mom, and a bunch of other smaller characters that are just like one-offs, one uh -huh. episode here and there. Have you found that rewarding to yeah. get to do so many different characters? Oh, yeah. To yeah. get to stretch within one show and like yeah. play against myself. That's the best part when you get to do a few characters. I think I think my maximum was like three characters in one scene. That's amazing. And that's when they were like, we need to stop hiring Sarah. <laughs> and um, that's uh, that's really yeah, the best, uh, best, best scenario for me. Yeah. For them, it makes them nervous. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like you have a lot, a lot going on, a lot coming up. Yeah, um, thankfully, not going. I know you also day. are kind of. Uh, you've been involved in um, charities for mm -hmm. animals. Can you talk a little bit about that? So my cat died. Uh, Lisa Ortiz's cat died. We were recording an episode where a Pokemon dies, and we're bawling. We're not mm -hmm. happy. Then my grandma died. Everybody died. No. So everybody died. And then uh, Lisa and I were like, we should start a, a bit of a charity to help foster animals, to promote to promote fostering. Because fostering is not something I ever heard of. Mm. And that's weird because I love animals mm -hmm. and I know about the shelter system and stuff like that. And I didn't know about fostering. And I felt like this is ridiculous. If I don't know about it, then most people don't know about it. And uh, we started promoting it and talking about it and raising money to fund the rescuers who are out there rescuing mm -hmm, the cats mm -hmm. because they are so often i have a separate instagram account and i watch them and i follow them and i've gotten to know them in person and i'm like these people are constantly begging for money because they are out there literally all day like at, there's one i won't say her name there's one rescuer who's who works at a school as a, as a lunch lady mm -hmm. And after work, she goes and rescues cats. She gets calls from everywhere mm. to come. Oh, there's another cat hero. There's an abusive situation. There's a, um, a hoarding situation here. Mm. And she has to go get them. Often they're feral and they bite and it's dangerous and you can get diseases. And it's like really awful hard work, but it's so rewarding because you're saving these animals. Um, so I wanted to help people like that. Mm -hmm. We're just doing this because they they literally their souls don't allow them not to. Have you yeah. done fostering yourself? Yeah, my mom and I fostered over a hundred cats and kittens. Oh my gosh, no, mm -hmm. not all at one time. No, not all at once. That would be tough. That would be bad for the cats. <laughs> that would be the hoarding situation. That would be a hoarding situation. <laughs> no, I started with four after my cat passed away. Um, mm -hmm. I, my purpose was was this. I was like, I need to know if all cats. Are, are are different like will i find another perfect mm, cat like like yeah. the cat who passed away mm. she was perfect she was amazing and i'm like there's there's no way all the other cats are terrible so i started fostering cats to get to know them and each one of them has a distinct personality and yeah. it's so obvious you just never know what you're gonna get uh -huh. out of any cat you know yeah and the way they bond to you and ugh. I don't want to make you cry too. Man. I know. I just lost my cat in January. So everybody died. <laughs> very sad. It's very sad. I'm so sorry. But that's amazing that you're doing that. Now, yeah. if any of our viewers want to get involved, um, is there anywhere they can go to find out more? Let me give you both. Yeah. Voicesforfosters.com. Voicesforfosters.org. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on thank the show and sitting me. down with us. We feel so lucky to finally get to meet you face to face and um back anime back anime we'll be there next weekend two Woo. weekends in a row Woo. very excited so yeah um so thank you for coming we appreciate thank it you. thanks sarah thanks for having me and thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And um, if you enjoyed the show, why wouldn't you have enjoyed this awesome show with uh, Sarah? Um, then come and uh, click subscribe, share with a friend, do the things that you do to share your love. Um, and we'll see you next week. Bye.